So. Alright then, guys. Welcome. Welcome to the roleplay part of the stream, and welcome to the Plague Doctor Scourge guide. Um, there's been a recent balance patch. Just a little bit of background here. There's been a balance patch that changed some stuff about Scourge that actually finally makes this build good, in my opinion. At long last... We can use this stat and not feel a little bit icky while doing it. Like if you go if you guys recall correctly, when Plague Doctor came out, I was so excited. My eyes were just lit up, like, oh, it's finally happening. The ultimate hybrid scourge. The joy was there, the happiness was there, and then within just hours, my spirit was crushed. It was cloven in two by how not good the build was and just like how spectacularly underwhelming hybridizing uh heal necro was but no more okay but no more my friends the sand shade manifestation cooldown has been halved down to eight seconds signet of undeath life force has been multiplied by two now we get four percent every three seconds uh and we also uh, you know, as I, as I said, we can use our shades a lot more often. That allows us to take this trait and be effective with our barrier. Demonic law. This trait is very, very important, guys. Okay, we're getting into the traits now. Here we go. This is very good. This allows us to do damage. If you don't have this trait, you don't need damage, guys. And that's why you need it. You could take big shade if you really wanted to, but I wouldn't recommend it. Now that we can use our manifest sand shade every eight seconds... Which is six seconds with alacrity, a little bit over six seconds. This means this allows us to easily position our shades, reposition them very often, and effectively gives us a 10 target cap. And we can have three shades up at all time with alacrity with this setup here. And if you make a kind of shape like this, if you make this, here's the boss, right? This is the boss, guys. I'm role playing as the boss right now. If you jump up and down here, uh, and then you put your shades around, it means you can get good coverage there uh, around your group. You could even do something kind of like this. Um, and then, miraculously, you can actually hit your entire group with your F3 barrier uh, as well, and your F2 cleanse ability, and then boom, you, suddenly you've got a proper heal scourge build, while also taking a very, very aggressive set of traits there as well. Uh, and this, 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 so let's go over the scourge traits here. Like, as I said, demonic law. This means whenever you uh, apply torment, you uh, do more damage with that Torment. Torment and damage is up 33%, which is really big. Like, Torment is obviously a big part of Scourge. It's on Desert Shroud and on all of your manifest Sand Shade abilities. So whenever you press one of these buttons, you get a little bit of Torment. Also on uh, Scepter 3, which is very core to this build. And Harrowing Wave there as well. Um, so yeah, this trait is very, very important there. Extremely powerful. Then you take Desert Empowerment. Like, this trait doesn't actually seem that good. Uh, but it actually is really good. You spam shades a lot on this build. And the tooltip is still incorrect here. It says 1,590. But if I put this on myself, you can clearly see that it's actually 1,828. So whenever you place a shade, you get people, you get five people with uh, 1,800 barrier. Really, really handy. And then finally in schedule, you've got Fell Beacon. Uh, which means that you gain expertise based on a percentage of condition damage, and it reduces the recharge in your torch skills. Torch skills are really, really nice damage. You get burning, you get torment, you get some CC there as well. So you want to have that. Um, you want to have that built. You want to have that stuff going off way faster. And the extra expertise is really nice because we're playing Plague Doctor, guys. We're Plague Doctor. We haven't got any expertise. So all the expertise we can lay our hands on is actually really handy. As you can see, it gives us a pretty decent chunk there as well. I have got food on right now, so it's um, it's about 7% I think it gives you, roughly. Um, so that's really, really nice uh, to have there as well. Especially when you combine this with uh, Sand Sage. So Sand Sage is one of the reasons why this build is a lot better now as well actually, uh, because if you've got three shades up the entire time, you get a lot of condition duration. You get 15% extra condition duration. Well, you have this expertise is uh, condition duration. 15 expertise is 1%. Same with boon duration and concentration. You have uh, 75 of that per shade and 75 expertise as well. So if we put up all of our shades here, wow, our condition duration is up by um, 15% and boon duration as well. The boon duration is not really that important on this build. It is a little bit handy when you convert uh, a boon, a uh, condition into a boon, say on something like Matthias or Desmina or any of these encounters where there is, uh, when there's any kind of condition, this boon duration affects the conversion duration as well. Quite handy. Uh, and this does actually allow you to stack might pretty effectively in a five-man group environment as well by using oppressive collapse 
and then abrasive grit as well. You can take this trait here because you can really spam out a lot of uh, a lot of might and a lot of barrier in a five man group situation with abrasive grit. So yeah, that's definitely an option that you can go for there as well. But like that's the setup there for the certainly for the raid edition and the general purpose edition of Plague Doctor Scourge here as well. It's damn damn effective. I think you get a lot of damage from this setup here as well, and you maintain a good chunk of support thanks to our reduced cooldown on our F1 ability. An additional life force there. If you do find yourself struggling for life force, just take nourishing ashes. You'll sack a little bit of damage, but you will get uh, a you know a massive, uh, a massive boost in life force. You have infinite life force at that point. The other two trade lines are curses and blood magic. So for curses, you just run the standard DPS setup. Uh, you'll if you've played DPS scourge, you'll be very familiar with this. Plague sending. Whenever you uh, go in shroud, your next attack transfers conditions. It transfers two conditions. So whenever you hit your F five. It gives you this little buff, Plague Sending. Then you transfer conditions to your next attack. You use, this, you use this in combination with Blood is Power. So Blood is Power is a really, really powerful ability. It does a lot. Of, look at that. Look at that. 14,881 bleed damage when you use that. Insane. Absolutely insane. Crazy stuff. Uh, but it also self-bleeds you and self-torments you. And you'll see that the self-bleeding is 5,000 damage. And the self-torment is 4,000 damage, 6,000 if they're moving. So you are actually going to get another 9k damage if you successfully transfer this, which is a massive DPS increase. So what you do is, you know, you use F5, use a Desert Shroud, then BAM! Transfer. The blood is power. Simple stuff. Easy. Loads of extra damage, especially if the target's moving uh, as well. Uh, so yeah, lots of extra damage there, which you uh, use from Plague Sending there as well. And Master of Corruption is what gives you that extra torment there as well. Reducing the cooldown of Blow's Power, you can use Blow's Power more often, okay? And you get that extra torment. You might think, oh, dude, you get more, you get more condition on yourself. That doesn't sound very good. Actually, it is very good. That's a DPS increase. That's big damage. Massive cooldown reduction there as well. Uh, and this also affects our elite skill as well, which is Plague Lands. Uh, and Plague Lands recently got buffed as well. They reduced the cooldown on it um, by... From what do they reduce it from? They reduced it from 120 seconds to 90 seconds. So when we have that traded, it's 60 seconds. Whoa, insane. Uh, you get loads of damage. This is a really damaging ability. One of the other reasons why this build got good is also because of that Plague Lands change there as well. If you do happen to take Epidemic, if you need to kill some adds, this build is amazing at it. It's basically the same as a regular Scourge, regular Condi Scourge, at killing adds, thanks to its very high condition damage stat. So Epidemic, very, very powerful here as well. And because you have that reduced cooldown, you can use it on a lot of fights where, uh, if you don't have Curses, Epidemic is a little bit awkward to use sometimes, but here, absolutely not. We have that traded. Insane stuff, guys. Amazing. All right, and then finally we have Lingering Curse here as well. This is probably the main reason you're kind of forced to take curses if you ever want to do any kind of DPS with a Condi Necro. Uh, if you don't have Lingering Curse, you're a noodle. All right, look how this trait is broken. It's completely broken. Um, it gives you 200 condition damage when you're wielding a Scepter, which we're always going to be. Uh, and it also gives you a 50% base duration increase on all of your Scepter abilities. So what does that actually mean? Well, base duration and condition duration are actually separate things. So if you have expertise condition duration, you can only have up to 100% of that, right? But this is a special kind of thing where it affects the actual base duration of the condition rather than modifying that base duration. So in other words, the base duration on Grasping Dead is actually 10 seconds, right? With no, uh, with no condition duration. But what's happened here is that Lingering Curse sets that base duration to 15 seconds, and then our expertise and condition duration on our bleeds applies on top of that, effectively tripling the overall duration instead of just doubling it, because the expertise affects this 50% from Lingering Curse, right? So, amazing trait. This is where all your damage comes from. Also makes Devouring Darkness amazing as well. Great for cleaving down adds. Um, AoE boon corrupting adds as well, if that ever becomes a, a necessity as well. You get a bit of extra life force generation there as well, because um, it also gives you 2% per foe hit as well, right? Which is kind of handy. So yeah, you also get a much cooler icon. Look how cool that icon is, guys. That's pretty good. That's really good. Yeah. There are some really other good traits here in Curses too. Uh, target the weak. 
uh, combined with Barb Precision makes, and and also Furious Demise, these three traits all work really well together. Barb Precision means that on 33% chance, you get, uh, you know, you get a crit whenever you crit, you get a bleed some of the time, and you get 20% bleed duration. Now, Plague Doctor Seth doesn't have any precision on it, but oh wait, don't worry, we're in a raid environment, so we're going to be okay. We're going to be able to have Fury up a lot of the time, simply by being in a raid. We also get a lot of Fury from Furious Demise, thanks to our boon duration there. And 180 precision just for free. Uh, and then on top of that, you also have 2% critical chance increase for every condition on the foe. Like, a lot of the time, this will be around 20% extra crit. So you've got 20% extra crit from Target of the Week, you've got 20% crit from Fury, you've got uh, a little bit of baseline crit as well. 14%. So you end up with over 50% crit. So you get, you still get good value out of Barb Precision, even though you have no uh, precision whatsoever. Kind of nice if you ask me. I think that's some pretty good value right there. And finally, of course, you've got Blood Magic. Ah, Blood Magic. Ah, Blood Magic. The favorite. As usual, it's the king. It's the most overpowered raid trait line in the entire game. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Ritual of Life. The thing that really makes this build tick around when you combine it with Transfusion. Well of Blood, revised by 7% per pulse, and whenever you press F, you get a Well of Blood for free. Very, very good trait. Just devastatingly strong. For the raid bosses, not for you. Um, this means that when, you know, every 30 seconds, uh, reduced by Alacrity down to right 28, 28 seconds, you get an easy res on someone. And this is something that does go, really go unnoticed, actually. As soon as you press F, the well spawns, it heals you and starts pulsing out healing as well. So it starts pulsing out healing for 500 a second to everyone in the radius, and it auto heals you for 5,000, right? So if you're getting a little bit low and you get this proc, you're going to massively heal over the next five seconds, right? And everyone around you as well. Really good for restabilizing. And of course, you have this on your regular heal skill as well, which is a really convenient a way to not only heal your group, but also have a controlled revival skill as well. Amazing trait there. Just, mm, just incredible. Incredible gaming, guys. It really is. Um, then, Vampiric Presence. This is, uh, you know, this is the Necromancer's pathetic attempt at a DPS increase trait that uh, buffs people in our group. It is pretty good, though. I have to give people, I have to give it credit. It is actually a really good trait. Do not underestimate this. If you've got this in your subgroup, you are going to give people a little bit of a DPS increase, like a few, few extra hundred DPS. So you're helping, right? You're useful. You're helping. Uh, and it gives people a tiny bit of extra sustain as well. Like they get every half second, it will heal people for about 60, which is not horrible. Like you could be getting 100 health a second out of this. Not bad at all. In addition to increasing some DPS too, uh, as well. Like bear in mind, whenever you go in Shroud, as well this will uh increase this will double like the the damage and the healing doubles while you're in shroud it's not really sufficient to actually want to play around this uh because we're just going to be doing our regular uh regular condi scourge rotation so just focus on dps don't really worry about utilizing this extra damage but it is really nice to have this right you know it's better than the other options really you could play with life from death if you really wanted to i don't really think it's that good it's very difficult to control um on this build really because of like the way desert shroud works it procs after six seconds right so you know you got some real you've either real thinking man you've got some insane foresight uh you, you can you can get away with it but mm, not exactly ideal uh to do that and then finally oh it is the one that makes it oh so famous guys it's transfusion transfusion is here my goodness what an ab what an ability ladies and gentlemen my goodness Shroud 4, which is our garish pillar ability here, our F4, means that whenever we cast that, we start pulsing out 500 healing, reviving down targets by 2%. That gets overlooked a fair bit, actually. Watch out for that, right? And on top of that, it uh, teleports them to you as well. Right? Why is that good? Well, I'll tell you why it's good. We'll see this later in the gameplay section as well, I'm sure. Uh, but what this allows you to do is get so much value out of Ritual of Life. Transfusion is amazing. It enables this entire build's playstyle pretty much. 
People are going down. It's a clown fiesta, right? Like, there's people running left and right. Doesn't matter. You hit that F4, get that garish pillar, you bring him in, you drop the well of blood, bam. It's easy. They all get revived at the same time. A lot of classes have traits like this that you have an AoE revive, but no class except Necro has the ability to pull your friends into the revive, right? It just... Oh, it's so good, guys. Like, even with Plague Doctor... You get so much value out of this. You really, really do. It is so, so strong. Um, it's amazing. Like, I've always said that with Heal Necro, the gear, eh, it's not important. What's important? The trait lines. The trait lines are what's important, guys. And that's why, you know, as long as you've got this blood magic, you're going to have a massive impact on your group. And now you can be doing DPS as well because of Plague Doctor. There are also some really good traits here that I would be amiss um, and not to mention here as well. Last Right is really, really good. Plague Doctor doesn't have the most healing power in the world. But last rites gives us a little bit of a nudge, especially if we start to get low. 450 healing power below 50% health. That's a lot, actually, guys. That's a lot. So if you start getting low, you actually start healing more, barriering more, stuff like that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, stay around there. You know, I wouldn't go for like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go really low. Oh, yeah, it was all weird. No, no, that's not smart, guys. That's the peepo brain move, right? Uh, always try and never die, always survive, right? But yeah, nice little bonus here. But also, what's, what's that unique buff? What does that unit buff say, guys? You do not lose health while downed? What the? You, once, you take, once you take this trait, guys, or rather, once you have this trait, you're never going to want to go back. Last right is amazing. Players in the down state lose health over time. This prevents that. They don't bleed out at all in the downside. This just makes it so much easier to recover people. It just slows down the bleed, literally, um, from people dying and losing those players. It gives you more time to get there, get the transfusion, get the res, and get the job done. So yeah, amazing trait there as well. Um, Vampiric, this is for you, really. Just a little bit more sustain. Uh, when you, This is particularly powerful when you're cleaving. If you're, say, fighting five enemies at the same time, there's no cord on this, and you actually you're going to get a massive amount of life steal from this uh, while using stuff like Desert Shroud, spamming your abilities, all that sort of stuff, right? You're going to get a lot of life steal there, but just a nice little bonus there is Vampiric, actually. Uh, and then finally, we have Mark of Evasion here as well. Leave a mark of blood when you dodge. This trait is... Uh, it's not that horrible. It's not uh, It's not amazing. It doesn't really do too much for us. Our regeneration will probably never be ticking. Uh, because we don't have a crazy amount of healing power compared to, say, a druid or something like that. So our regen probably won't be ticking. But hey, for, for, if for some weird reason you don't have a druid um, or your druid is dead or you're in an open world, you can dodge, get a mark of blood and actually get a decent amount of healing from that and some sustain from that. Some damage too there as well. You know, there was a time when this used to be a DPS increase to use this actually um, on core necro. But those days are long behind us there, that's for sure. So there you have it. Those are all the traits that we have uh, to deal with here for uh, for Plague Doctor Scourge. It is uh, a beautiful setup here. Finally dropping Soul Reaping. Glad to get rid of that. Now, that is something that I do want to mention there as well, uh, is that Soul Reaping does allow you to mash your buttons, right? And it's fun, but this build, you know, ooh, if you thought the Thinking Man Scourge was a Thinking Man's build, then... Oh my goodness, guys. I've got a treat for you. This build will actually require you to flex your brain a little bit. You aren't going to be able to mindlessly spam. You have a higher cooldown on your main barrier ability of Sand Cascade. And also on transfusion as well. This means you are going to have to think about your ability usage a little bit more. So instead of kind of having transfusion up permanently, you're probably going to want to use it either when you know that there's going to be some damage coming and people might start downsetting, or you're going to want to save it for when you need to pull someone out of an AoE or something. And the same is true for Sand Cascade as well. It's really, really important that you use this when you know damage is going to come through, right? You want to make sure you get value out of these abilities here as well uh so yeah just something to something to watch out there for when you're playing this build be a little bit careful uh with your transfusion and your sand cascade your garish pillar and sand cascade because you, it can be a little bit uh, 
a little bit spicy. You know, you've got to use these cor uh, correctly. Um, and you're going to want to be sparing with Nefarious Favor as well. Because we're not using Dagger, we're using Scepter to do a lot more damage. We can't spam as much without running out of steam. Okay, if you want to spam, you can with Nourishing Ashes, right? You can just take Nourishing Ashes, you can spam to your heart's content, right? Which might be worth it. Like on something like Matthias, where there's a lot of conditions, even Desmina, where you want to be cleansing people a lot. You may actually want to consider taking this. I think you can get away with without um without uh without nourishing ashes if you're smart but if you want to if you're learning you just want to spam a little bit then you can do that too but do be careful uh with how that works like you can still do everything that a regular heal scourge can this is a little bit more of a uh, of a bit of a uh, a fine balance it's not as forgiving as regular heal scourge there as well so there you go. And that kind of covers it for the traits and general setup. Uh, utility skills here as well. Uh, we obviously have our Scepter Torch, Scepter Warhorn. We'll get into gearing in a little bit. Uh, but our key abilities are going to be Well of Blood, Signet of Undeath, Blood is Power, Plague Lands, and Epidemic. This is the general setup here. Uh, that you're going to want to run on most bosses. Well, not necessarily most bosses. Bosses, this is like the most common setup, I would certainly say. But not, maybe not all of them. Uh, our slot that we can swap out is going to be Epidemic, right? Epidemic is obviously not good on every fight. Not every fight has ads. So that's what we can move out there. But yeah, Well of Blood, we've already gone over that. Mega Heal, amazing res. It's good stuff. Signet of Undeath has actually had its functionality changed, so we're definitely going to go over that right now. Uh, but this is a really, really important ability here. It gives us loads of life force over a fight, and it gives us a bit of a sneaky res there as well. Now, it's a bit less of a panic button, and more of a, okay, I need that guy right now res. I don't think I can get to him in time, right? This has been changed to an ability that actually costs health. Signet of Undeath now costs 9,606 health, which is half of your base health. And um, that's up front. So as soon as you start casting it, it takes your health. And then after a short time, very short cast, now they reduce the cast time on that a lot, you can get a revive uh, our long range on one player. And because the cooldown is reduced, they halve the cooldown, you can use this a lot more. Like previously in other heal necro builds, like my, in my other heal necro guide, I would say that you use this in like, oh, it's terrible. It's a, a dire emergency. Not anymore. You can use this whenever you want, pretty much. Like, you can use it a lot. Um, and you sacrifice some of the life force generation, but that's okay. You can live without it, right? You just got to spam a little less and use your big brain. So yeah, really great ability there. Blood is power. We talked about this when we were talking about um, kind of the, the concepts of the Master of Corruption and Plague Sending trait. This is a massive DPS increase. Um, if you if you drop this, you're going to be really sad, right? Your meat, your numbers are not going to be good. e -peen is going to be shriveling up and just, it's gone, right? And you just don't want that. Uh, so blood is power, really, really important ability. Great for might stacking in a five-man group environment as well. So if you're in a fractal, if you're in... Um, um, say on Lagos and you've split off to the side and you need you, someone needs to stack might that's you you can stack might now uh with blood is power uh and oppressive collapse you can actually get some pretty good might stack action going on there as well which is especially when you combine it with the chrono or something like that to help you out a little bit on the duration but yeah 30 seconds of might insane guys absolutely insane well it's it's, it's not it's actually really depressing but we can pretend it's insane. And then, of course, uh, Plague Lands. This is just an, uh, an amazing ability now. 60 second cooldown, apply Ebola to your opponent, right? Like, the, ooh, ooh. If you can get the boss to stand on this, it's not going to go well for me, guys, right? It's really not going to go very well at all. Um, and all this stuff combines together, and it makes this build. I think you can, you can probably get. Uh, well, I know. Uh, I'll probably show this in the video as well, which you guys will see later. Uh, you can get a pretty, you can get a pretty good golem number on this. You can get um, over 20k DPS. And considering that regular scourge is probably around, I want to say around 30k DPS um, after some of the changes, you don't actually lose a massive amount of damage. Uh, I've been pugging a little bit, playing around some pugs. I have been out DPSing normal scourges, even some other classes as well in these pug environments. Right, like you can do a lot of damage and still bring a hell of a lot of support in. In part thanks to this new plague lands change it just does so much damage 60 second cord on this is absolutely insane you do so much damage with this as well especially because you can also have more expertise up for that now because you can always have three shades you've got loads of extra condition duration there as well on your plague land so it's amazing it's mass dps it's crazy insane 
Very good. Now, I will say, if you're on a fight where you need a lot of CC, you can go ahead and take Flesh Golem. You'll be sad, but your team will be happy, right? And that's what counts, guys. That's what counts. You know, you're here to support, to win, right? So, um, Flesh Golem, amazing CC. One of the one of the best things that a Necromons can take to kind of carry the group there as well. So, don't hesitate. If you need break bar damage, you take the Golem. Uh, and Epidemic has a bunch of stuff you could take that's really, really useful. So, that, you need some stability. Trail of Anguish, okay? Uh, because you can... It, this has no target. If you run over your entire team, you can give a stack of stability to your entire team. Really nice, okay? That's a good ability. You need some extra CC. You want to pull some ads? Spectral Grasp, okay? To be fair, if you're going to be dealing with ads, you probably have Epidemic anyway, right? But, you know, you, you, if for some reason you need extra CC or pulls or something like that, then you can do that. Spectral Grasp as well. Uh, this is particularly good on... You could, do, you could use this on something like Zera, right? Like on Zera, Epidemic on the ads is not that great unless they get pulled because they get instantly cleansed by the AIDS AoE, right? So pull could be handy there as well. Uh, you could also take stuff like Corrupt Boon. This could be good on Lagos, right? In case your team are a bunch of clowns, right? That can be a problem. Uh, you know, Sandswell, you could, I don't know, if you, if you r really want to be weird, you could, uh, do a, do pylon duty on Kadeem or something like that. Or if you just need to move around a little bit, or if you need to have some mobility, Sandswell can be really, really useful as well. Um, if you wanted to on Desmina to make extra sure, um, you could just go ahead and drop Signet of Undeath, and then you could take Epidemic and Sandswell, so you can portal through the walls, and you can also... Uh, epidemic as well, so you can kill the uh, the golems and portal the walls to carry your team as well. So Signet of Undeath is the other place where you can flex, but you you know Epidemic is the one where it's like more like niche utility there um, as well. Uh, in terms of other utility, not much else you can really take. Well of Power can be handy on fights that are going to have some pulsing conditions. Stuff like uh, Zero, this can be useful. Stuff like Mercer Overseer, this can be useful as well. Um, you know, if you, again you'd have to drop uh, Signet of Undeath there as well, so you can have Epidemic too but you know there's there's a lot of good skills that you can have on necro so corrosive poison card is probably i want to say the uh like one of the ones that you may see sometimes like on conjured amalgamate challenge mode for example on severe this could be good uh to block some of the projectiles as well so yeah if you need to deal with projectiles this can be handy don't use this on matthias okay don't clown your team don't be a don't be a noob right not good yeah so it can be handy there as well uh, but yeah, that's basically it for utility skills. One day they'll make Serpent Siphon good, but today is not that day, guys. It's not that day at all. It really isn't, and it feels bad. It's, uh, it's a bit depressing. Oh, one more thing, actually. Spectral Ring. Uh, this can be a really handy piece of utility on a, an encounter where you need to uh, control some ads. Like this, uh, I would say that Kadeem 1, you can get some value out of Spectral Ring to prevent the slimes, the lava elementals from reaching Kadeem, but that's about it. Uh, you, well, if, if you're the only one carrying your team with Spectral Ring in this situation, okay, then things have gone badly and you need to start yelling at them, right? Okay, like that's, that, that's all I'm going to say there. There you go. There's all the utility skills. We've got that sorted. And now it's time for gearing, right? Like, you know, I didn't bother going over this because you read the title of the video and you saw Plague Doctor Scourge. But now you're going to see, okay? You're going to see the majesty of the Plague Doctor. Everything is Plague Doctor. That, uh, oh, except, except this, which is apparently Marshall's by accident. But we're going to edit that out, okay? Um, and this is a great ch this is a great opportunity. This is an amazing opportunity to look at the rune choice here. We have the superior rune of the crate, okay? The superior rune of the crate, my friends. Let's just take a look at this setup here. It gives us condition damage and bleed duration. Necromancer's damage mostly comes from bleeding. We want to cap out on that bleed duration. And you'll see that we have a 77.9% bleed duration. With this rune, it gives you a massive 50% extra bleed duration. Loads of condition damage, 175 condition damage. And on top of that, whenever you use your elite skill, which is quite often now, because you can use it in about every 48 seconds, uh, you also get an extra bleed stack, an extra torment stack, and a poison stack as well uh, to all nearby foes. And that means the boss a lot of the time. So extra damage we love it and here you go if we just go ahead and use our food which by the way are some koi cakes and toxic focusing crystals let's have a look at this when we put down all three of our shades with food enabled you'll notice that you will get to 99.93 
percent bleed duration whoa perfectly capped incredible really really good stuff there so yeah everything is plague doctor everything is plague doctor we've got a sigil of bursting uh and a sigil of the earth just for more st stacking way more bleeds like bleeds are our main condition so we want that sigil of earth um just to go big there on our offhand as well. Um, Sigil of Bursting means that we get 5% just modified. So if, if you see 100 bleed, this would make it 105 bleed. That's really, really advantageous. It means that you can, well, burst stuff really hard with conditions. This is very valuable with Epidemic in particular. Actually, you can Epidemic, and then your Epidemic does 5% more damage. It's like flat, which is absolutely incredible. Really, really, really good um, uh, Sigil there to have for a build like this as well. So a lot of damage there. And the Warhorn is the same. Uh, you can have a Paralyzation Sigil for more CC, which is what I have here. You could also just have another Earth as well, just to do some more damage, right? You know, it really is uh, entirely up to you there. Both are perfectly acceptable. Uh, for Infusions, just have uh, whatever you have. They're not really that important, right? As always, it's like a 2% difference there. Uh, just have Raw Condition Damage or Expertise. Both are absolutely fine uh in this setup here as well so yeah you can just go with that big damage big extra stuff there extra source we love it that's what we want to see uh and yeah that's it for the stats uh the the good thing part about plague doctor is that you have a huge amount of health now why do you want vitality why do you want vitality but well let me tell you uh, let me tell you why you want vitality you want vitality because of scourge scourge abilities cost life force but they cost a flat amount of life force they always cost the same amount and your abilities all generate percentage life force and your total life force is based on your amount of health so if you have more health your abilities generate more life force right more a bigger number but because your abilities don't cost a percentage amount of life force the higher the health you have the cheaper your abilities are now this is very important because we don't have soul reaping if you have soul reaping you get more life force and more life force generation as well from all sources so uh to compensate for that having that extra vitality you know we don't have we don't have cooler reduction on our shroud abilities we don't have um we don't have extra life force max pool and we don't have an extra increased generation of life force with uh gluttony so gluttony uh, soul battery. These are all really, really handy, right? These two traits are really, really good to help us generate more life. We don't have that. You know, we've got we've got curses and blood magic. It's no good. So to compensate for that, we use a high health pool. Also, it's really nice to have a high health pool on uh, a healer. It means you can just take hits, right? You can be resing someone in an AOE, no problem. You can take a few punches, right, yourself before you go down to make sure that you're the last player standing to carry your team uh to victory so very good there and that is why the doctor is finally in plague doctor scourge is here now i will say if you want to run other gear types you absolutely can uh if you wanted to run seraph if you wanted to run martial combined with shaman that's okay too i like plague doctor i think it gives you the best compromise between not being dead being able to support your team effectively and having nice damage output, uh, I think that's the best compromise that you can get with this stat. The concentration, maybe not that useful, but everything else is great. It helps you do your job. It helps you fulfill the role that you want to play. And, you know, you get to be the doctor, right? You want to be the doctor, right? I like that. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I think this is good. I, I just, I've always wanted this to be good. Like it's such a good role play. You know, you're the necromancer, you're the plague doctor, right? You go in there, you do damage, you put condies on, you've got the snake scepter. You should have the snake scepter for this, by the way, guys, if you don't have the snake scepter, I'm not really sure, uh, if I can consider you a real plague doctor necro, you know, you need the snake scepter for this one. Otherwise it's not going to work. Uh, but yeah, that is pretty much the build described, my friends. That is about it it's amazing it works in raids you can play this in fractals you can play this in open world it is a jack of all trades master of all um carry plebs in open world carry plebs in raids carry them in fractals as well you're gonna have a good time and now the additional capacity of being able to do damage simultaneously is just mm, not bad not bad at all so you can talk the mage you can embarrass people with your like oh i've only got one offensive stat you guys have got three and you're still doing less dps you can meme on them you can meme on them hard and it's gonna feel good